Hey guys, it's Wendy with Crooked House Herbals. Welcome to our Thursday night get together. Tonight's talk is um, Earth Suit Maintenance number six, and we're going to talk about cholesterol and heart health. I hope you guys have had a good week. This weather here in Arkansas has been fantastic. And for those of you that may not know who I am, my name is Wendy Fargo, and I am the founder and of Crooked House Herbals here in the middle of the country in um, the Washita Mountains here in our, um, Arkansas. I am a master herbalist. I have a master's degree in herbology and I also have a doctorate in education. So I am an educator as well. I am here to talk to you about um, some things that might you may or may not have heard. Um, it's not a topic that um, is new to anybody. Everybody has heard about heart health and cardiovascular issues um, from mainstream media, from big pharma, from plenty of commercials on television, from your doctors trying to make sure that you have plenty of prescriptions. Um, but I want to talk to you about it in a, in a different way, from a different angle. And I want to welcome all of my wonderful friends. Hey, Pamela. It's nice to see you here. And Crystal and Michelle. I see you here. Um, let's first of all talk, let's, let's get a definition of cardiovascular disease. It is a disease of the heart and or blood vessels, uh, including but not limited to Alterior sclerosis, congestive heart failure, cardiac arrhythmia, angina, stroke, stenosis, elevated lipids, uh, cholesterolemia, blood clots, aneurysms, high blood pressure. All of those things are all lumped into the definition of cardiovascular disease. So here are some statistics that may interest you. And I'm not going to dwell on this a lot because I don't like confessing negative things but I wanted to just give you an idea <laughs> since we're in a pandemic <laughs> and we have such a, a terrifying thing going on right now in our country and these are everyday stats I thought maybe we could shed a little light and maybe get a little perspective hey Rosalind nice to see you thanks for joining us okay so more than a million more than a hundred million Americans have high blood pressure all right uh, coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease it kills over 365,000 people every year um, about 800,000 people in the United States have a stroke every year in fact Somebody has a stroke every 40 seconds in our country. Interesting. Can't top some things, but I don't think the coronavirus has got these kind of numbers. Um, about 6.5 million adults in the United States have heart failure. I put this stuff in the documents that you can um, download, so you, and it's got links so you can actually go to these websites and check into this if you're more interested, but I just want to kind of give you a perspective. About 650,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. That's one in every four deaths. Um, okay. Let's talk, let's break it down. We've got, I, I listed all those different things that are all listed into, in heart dis, in cardiovascular disease. But let's first talk about ulterior sclerosis. What is that? That's basically the hardening of the small and large arteries. Um, it's characterized by uh, fatty deposits, platelets, macrophages, and other white blood cells throughout the uh, endothelial cell layer, and then eventually it'll move into your, um, your um, smooth muscle, muscle layer if it's not treated or addressed soon enough. Um, most, the arteries that are most often affected are the um, 
coronaries, the aorta, and the cerebral arteries. So you you know it's where you get your brain aneurysms and your um, coronary heart problems. So um, the first step in the development is an injury to the endothelial cells. This is called inflammatory immune response. And this is usually where people get stuck. Hi, Dottie. It's, welcome. It's good to see you. Um, and this is actually interesting because the inflammatory immune response um, stage is where your um, the integrity of your cell walls will become breached. And this is where the cholesterol gets in and um, will start to gain access to your endothelial cells and it causes like a buildup or a bulging, okay? And this is how blood clots start and it's also how scars are formed. So it's, it's interesting to see that that whole inflammatory immune response is what the start of that is. If you, even if you injure yourself and you can head off that inflammatory immune response, say with something like cayenne pepper or um, something that diffuses the blood pooling right then, which is my favorite thing is cayenne pepper. I use it a lot. I use it in my deep treat, which is a, a rub that I make that literally diffuses that blood pooling. It'll keep you from getting a bruise and it'll keep you from pooling blood. And if you can keep that from happening, then you won't have a scar you won't even have a mark and you won't have a clot so it, it keeps the blood thinned cayenne pepper does that and then it'll keep it'll diffuse it out so that you you know you've you've dilated your blood vessels and moved the the injury through okay some exercise and movement and hydration clean out your lymph system and keep the lymph moving so the, the the waste products that go through your system have to go through your lymph system and if you have clogs and if you have blockages then your lymph gets backed up and that's when you start running into some serious problems so you've got to stay moving you've got to stay hydrated and you've got to keep your lymph system clean there's there's also some things that you can do like brushing your skin I know that sounds weird but if you brush your extremities towards your collarbone if you brush literally brush your skin and move your lymph your lymph system around manually you can clear a lot of lymph um, a lymph, your lymphatic system if it gets and you'll know because you feel sluggish sometimes you get you know lumps and things where your lymph system is clogging up so you want to get that stuff moving and keep it out and drinking plenty of water is one of the best ways and exercise nothing new here right okay eating foods that are unhealthy is going to create over time um, a weakened vascular wall okay it's gonna weaken your whole vascular system our food literally is our medicine <clears throat> and so if you're not paying attention to what you're putting in your body eventually it might not happen tomorrow but eventually you are going to know you're going to have evidence um, of what you've been eating because your body is going to take a hit one way or the other fortunately we do get new cells every 11 months and so there's always hope but you've got to pay attention to what you're putting in your body. And I'm going to tell you some interesting things about cholesterol, which will make you feel good, <laughs> I think. Because I know that we get, we get hammered all the time about high cholesterol and cholesterol making foods and blah, 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 blah. And so what you're going to find out is cholesterol is not necessarily the bad guy. Okay? Um, here are some causes of ulterior sclerosis in case you don't already know them. Um, okay, your HDL carries your fat away from your cells. Your LDL and your VLDL carry fat to your cells and deposit it under your endothelial cells. So your liver works to balance these out. So a key player in 
balancing and circulating cholesterol and triglycerides is your liver. That's where it's all. That's where it all happens. It's your liver has to have the cholesterol to break down and process your food. That's why you have to have cholesterol in your body. If you don't have enough, then your liver doesn't work right. But it's where you get your cholesterol cholesterol from is what matters, because your body will produce a certain amount of it all on its own, probably what it needs. But if you're going to take in more cholesterol it needs to be a good kind so for the longest time they used to always say don't eat eggs because eggs have cholesterol in them well yeah but they're not a bad cholesterol so an egg over a steak is a good choice just saying okay high blood pressure produces shear forces that literally like scrape away the endothelial layer and it creates clots and thrombos and um, they can break off and travel through the smaller areas and they can create blockages so high blood pressure is not your friend and it is also a contributor to ulterior sclerosis ulterior sclerosis I don't nobody ever pronounces that right but it's okay um, another thing that's interesting is certain viral infections contribute to that one of them is herpes um, I didn't know that but I think that that's interesting because viruses have a way of affecting certain organs um, you know like the coronavirus now is uh, supposedly affecting the lungs you know the respiratory um, well herpes is a virus that's been around a long time but it does affect your arteries and your ability your cardiovascular system <clears throat> okay so high high blood iron levels are another um, contributor and one of the reasons that usually men have higher blood iron issues and higher blood pressure in general than women is because at least while women are menstruating they get rid of a lot of blood so you know there's times during the month when we actually have iron poor blood and so our our blood pressure is lower um, but overall I think it all evens out because eventually we don't do that anymore <laughs> and so our blood pressure will rise a little bit as we get older uh, sodium and potassium levels this is something that I've actually been um, working with with my mother this week she's had some issues and we're thinking that this might be one of the things that's happening is she's got uh, some so potassium quirks but um, the sodium and potassium in our body is what makes our electricity and we are electric we are water and electricity and so if those things get off and your electrolytes are off but specifically sodium and potassium you can literally blow a fuse and it can make you have a heart attack so you want to especially if you're older you want to you know have those levels checked frequently and just make sure that you are okay in the sodium and potassium level area okay what you're gonna find is the most interesting though and probably the biggest contributor to cardiovascular disease period and I bet you don't know what it is vitamin C deficiency scurvy basically and you know there was like a wave of time 50s and 60s maybe early 70s where um, you know we all took our vitamin C. We always had vitamin C. Moms always made sure we ate our oranges. We, there, you know, there was a whole lot more orange juice being drunk. There was just, um, it wasn't, didn't ever seem to be an issue. But as our diets have declined and become worse and worse through the years, and the advent of fast food and, um, you know not spending as much time at home eating period and certainly not picking out oranges or citrus or those kinds of things that are high in vitamin C bell peppers and strawberries and things like that people were um, you know they're more apt to just oh yeah I had my smoothie today with my 
frozen whatever in it and you know and they figure that they've got their their citrus or their vitamin C for the day but it's not enough our bodies need vitamin C vitamin C is what protects your vascular integrity and it protects the cell walls in your cardiovascular system it's that easy so if you can remember back a few episodes back when we talked about one of the best ways to get your vitamin C was pine needle tea and I remember the first time I made pine needle tea for myself was actually when I was living in Oregon in my camper and I was in the cutest campground and they had the coolest pine trees and so I would walk my dog and then I would take a little bag with me and I'd pull pine needles off the pine trees and I'd go back to my camper and I'd make myself pine needle tea and drink it because I was adjusting to the different environment and sometimes I didn't feel very well and so I wanted to make sure that my my vitamin C levels were boosted and I drank pine needle tea pine needle tea has five times the vitamin C as a, of a cup of orange juice so and it's easy and if you're in our neck of the woods right now our national our state tree is the pine tree and we've got the right ones we've got the yellow pines and the loblollies so vitamin C is you don't have any excuse if you live in Arkansas not to get enough vitamin C and if you want to know how to make it just email me or text me or send me a message and I'll gladly tell you how to make pine needle tea it's not difficult or Google it okay there are some pine trees on the west coast especially that you want to avoid so you want to make sure that you use the right pine trees but super great way to get vitamin C and it's tastes good I love it some people like to put honey in it some people I like to squeeze a little lemon or what's also really good is peppermint if you have some fresh mint and you throw it in there when you're brewing it it's delicious I make a big thing of it and keep it in my refrigerator so vitamin C is the culprit more times than not and you know you never hear about that when you go and the doctor says oh yeah you've got this and you got that here you need to take these drugs and they'll start putting you on drugs right away when really what they should do if they were responsible would be to put you on a high vitamin C regimen for a month and then see how you are when you get done because it could be that easy and I don't know just saying I'm gonna give you information you guys do with it whatever you want to do with it so let's move on the next thing I want to address that's in that list is hypertension hypertension is not a disease it is a symptom of a disease this is a vitalist viewpoint but it's not the disease so hypertension is abnormally high blood pressure um, usually something like 140 over 90 and then up from there um, you're getting into the hypertension range over 50 million Americans are diagnosed with this every year Hey Greta um, So hypertension is another key player with your cardiovascular issues 90% um, of the cases of hypertension and um, of the like it's funny when you when you ask 90% of the cases the doctors will admit they don't know what the cause is they'll say we don't know you just have it but well, we don't know why and 10% of the cases are linked to disorders in the kidneys the adrenal glands the arteries diabetes that's where the hypertension comes from that's where the blood pressure comes from now if you think about it for a second anytime you have pain your blood pressure is going to rise um, or anytime you have stress on any other organ your blood pressure is going to rise but it's interesting to me that the only times that they can really identify what's causing it is if it's kidneys adrenal glands arteries or diabetes the rest of the time they don't really know which tells me something it tells me that more than likely it's lifestyle and that's why they can't peg it because everybody I mean we're all living our own lives and we all have stuff going on you know we have loved ones that are sick we have you know we're out of work 
We don't know where our next paycheck's coming from. We don't, you know, or we've got automobiles that don't run, or we've got storms that are wiping us out, or, you know, there's always something. And so everybody's going to deal with stress a little differently, and stress is a major player. So knowing yourself and knowing how to deal with stress that comes our way is going to save your heart. It's going to help you a lot with hypertension. And you can't say, you really just can't blame hypertension for your problems. Hypertension is a symptom of something else. So you have to back it up and you have to examine your own life and say, why do I have this? What's going on with me? List it out. You know, I'm sure you've got a million things. And then start addressing them in a way that can help you to alleviate the stress and bring that down. Because most hypertension cases, unless you've got kidney problems, adrenal gland problems, diabetes, or what was the other thing I mentioned? Uh, arteries, clogged arteries or something. More than likely, it's lifestyle. So, moving on. Um, the thing that's also interesting about that, though, is they, just with those four areas alone, I found it interesting that that is a two and a half billion dollar industry. That's how many, that's how much money is made in drugs just addressing those four things. So, again, you know, I'm all about taking my own life back and some of my money too, maybe. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, of course, any kind of risks are gonna increase if you uh, are a tobacco user or if you drink a lot or even if you drink a lot of caffeine. Um, caffeine is, um, it closes your vascular system. So you, you wanna go easy with caffeine. I'm not saying you can't have any, I'm just saying moderation. Don't be a coffee drinker all day long because you're going to close up your vascular system and you don't want to do that. Birth control pills, weight gain, um, and an unhealthy lifestyle. And uh, again, your emotional state all come into play <clears throat> with this organ and your veins and your arteries and your circulation. Um, we are body, mind, and spirit people, whether you want to admit it or not, and we are all connected. That's the way we were designed. So when one aspect of our life is out of whack, you can expect it to manifest in other parts of your body or other parts of your mental state, whatever it is. We're, it's all connected. So this is a good time for you to take time to you know, evaluate your own situation. We are all in different places. And maybe implement some things that would help you with stress level. Whether it's, you know, uh, singing or dancing or listening to music or taking walks or planting flowers or meditating or, uh, you know, swimming. I don't know. Whatever it is that gets you to breathe and close your eyes and remember who you are and enjoy the sunset. That's what you need to do because that's what we're here to do. We are not here to grind out our life. We're not here to work hard till we die. That's not why we're here. We're here to create. We are creators. We are exquisite people and we have lots to offer. And you can't go wearing your heart out or your cardiovascular system by thinking that it's all up to you. Because it isn't. I'll leave that alone. Okay, now, stress produces uh, corticosteroids and endorphins which cause the breakdown. Okay, so you'll, your fat will go to fatty acids, your protein to amino acids. It results in um, neurotransmitter issues. Okay, you, I told you, we're water and electricity. Once things start going, you're going to short circuit and your neurotransmitters will, well, it causes like a constriction in your brain and in your central nervous system and it will keep the water from going to your cells. So, so you fry, 
okay so it's really really important that you stay hydrated and by hydrated I mean drink a lot if you're drinking whatever you're drinking right now you need to double it double what you're drinking right now and if you say I drink a lot of water every day I drink this I drink that well, I drink a lot too but you know what I also work hard outside I'm outside half my day and so what's gonna happen on a hot day I'm gonna sweat a lot um, and even on cold days I will so just the amount of energy that I'm exerting I need to drink a lot of water and that I, I promise you if you will drink more water you will feel a difference you can't hurt yourself just remember I'm water and electricity I'm water and electricity so what happens if you don't have the water for the electricity to flow through it's just like raw electricity I don't even want to think about that so keep the water okay the other thing that we want to talk about really quickly is your lymph flow um, protein and waste are removed through the lymph system I mentioned that earlier so it um, if this doesn't happen you get something called osmotic um, pressure okay and it forces the filtration into your um, interstitial fluid which will cause edema and you will swell up and you you can die okay so it's super important that your lymph system is constantly doing its job um, the fluid that I talked about is found in the spaces around your cells so it helps bring the oxygen and the nutrients to the cells and remove the waste from them so as new interstitial fluid is made and it replaces the old fluid which drains towards the lymph vessels okay so when it enters your lymph vessels it's called lymph or tissue fluid okay so if it's not flowing if it's not if the new stuff's not being made and the old stuff's not flowing out like it needs to you will get edema for, and you will swell up and people go I don't know what's wrong with me my ankles are so swollen my feet are so swollen well that's a that's a red flag that means you need to address your lymph system and you need to it's it's not it's not impossible it's easy enough to do you just need to be aware enough of your body to know that that's what you need to do and that's where you need to go I, I need to check out my lymph system something's wrong because I'm not getting rid of stuff like I need to knowing more about how your body works gives you power and it takes the fear away you're not so afraid to be alive okay our bodies are incredibly amazing and it's we are come we are wired we are built to heal ourselves to check and balance to everything I mean you just have to pay attention to this warning signs and to the feelings of the good feelings and the bad feelings and then you know but it takes taking your own life back it takes paying attention and not necessarily being told how you feel I think that's been a habit it's like passing on education to the school system instead of bothering to teach your kids a few things at home I can say that because I'm a teacher and I can tell the kids that whose parents talk to them and who have conversations with their family and who do things interacting with their siblings and have constructive time at home and then I can tell the kids that don't have a clue and nobody talks to them and I'm literally having to raise that child so it's the same way with you and your body and you need to pay enough attention to your body and you need to do your own research and you need to think about how your body's working and take responsibility for your own health and your own body instead of being told by somebody else who might not have ever had more than one hour of nutrition in his or her whole professional medical career which is true I've had many doctors tell me that so they don't necessarily know and they're gonna look at your symptoms and by your symptoms they're gonna prescribe for you a drug or a surgery or something okay
Alrighty, let's talk about a little bit real quickly about a couple different types of drugs because I want to tell you some alternatives, just in case you would like to know. There are things called statin drugs. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? I just want to make sure that I'm speaking loud enough. Give me a thumbs up, somebody, so I know you can hear me. Because I'm not getting a whole lot of feedback. So, I hope you can hear me. Um, statin drugs lower cholesterol, but they lower it by blocking the liver enzyme. Um, HMG COA, okay? Um, Lipitor, made by Pfizer, is the best selling drug in history and sells over $2.4 billion worth annually. The side effects are memory loss, neuropathy, muscle pain from, it's from the breakdown of 50% reduction in muscle cell growth, which is what one of the side effects of that. Think about all the muscles that can be affected by that. Half. 60% of all heart attacks occur in people with absolutely normal cholesterol levels. Chew on that for a minute. 60%. Most people with high cholesterol never suffer a heart attack. The liver does not produce more cholesterol than it is needed. So as long as you're not eating too much cholesterol that your liver can't keep up, and trust me, your liver is an amazing thing. That's, again, another reason why I, why I always say you need to do liver cleanses frequently as often as possible. You know, every three months at least. Because you've got to make sure your liver stays strong and is able to do its job. It's an amazing organ. So, Cholesterol is a major component of all cell membranes and it's used to make essential molecules like your hormones, fat soluble vitamins, bile acids, and help you digest your food. Okay, so cholesterol is important. It, that's, it helps to do all of that stuff. So by taking a statin drug, you are literally chopping the knees out from under your liver. Just food for thought. Okay, beta blockers. They block the electronic signals that regulate your heart's rhythm. It's kind of scary to me. They can cause depression, nightmares, bronchial as uh, spasms, elevated cholesterol, dizziness, loss of energy, fatigue, impotence, uh, worsening of congested heart failure, they can cause high blood pressure, they can cause um, a much higher mortality rate. Sounds like a great drug, doesn't it? And at the same time, it's messing with your electric signals that, you know, regulate your heart rhythm. Not one study, you guys, shows that at, used as, sing, as a singly hyper therapy, well, it means like by itself, uh, it, that it reduces mortality or coronary heart disease. Nowhere does it show that Lipitor does that. In fact, one study showed it increased it. It increased the coronary heart disease deaths. So in light of the, all of the information that we seem to be getting these days, about a certain other virus that's going around and manipulation of things and, and we're becoming more and more enlightened to the fact that this is definitely something that's going on. Um, I'm just gonna say if I had if I was taking some of these drugs I would really look into it and think about maybe some alternatives. Um, isn't it time that we begin to take a little more interest in what is being prescribed and why? And maybe even who's making it. Okay, so that's all of this kind of downer news. Now let's see what nature has provided for us. First of all, I will say that if you have an irregular heartbeat or if you have a, a rhythm issue or if you have a, well, I want to say mainly a regular heartbeat, like if too fast sometimes and slower sometimes. Lemon balm is one of the best things for lowering your heart rate. 
if it's too high you can take you can drink lemon balm tea and take cayenne pepper and have the healthiest heart ever and your heart rate will be normal so write that down lemon balm not lemongrass lemon balm okay um, here's some herbs that can be used instead of beta blockers angelica motherwort hawthorn which is my favorite valerian celery and carrots hmm let your food be your medicine um, and you know by the way any of these things almost any of these things I'm not gonna say carrots and celery because you can get those yourself but most of these herbal tinctures you can purchase from Crooked House Herbals you can also get them from any other um, health food store most likely so um, I'll say them again Angelica motherwort Hawthorn valerian and then carrots and celery beta blockers okay um, calcium channel blockers somebody asked me about that um, a while back calcium channel blockers prevent calcium from getting to the cardiac muscles and blood vessels resulting in less contraction of muscles which lowers blood pressure this process guys is contrary to nature not a good idea calcium is very important um, in your body but you need to get it and as a plant-based calcium in that form um, because anything else is probably not going to be assimilated by your body in a capsule or anything like that tablets um, oat straw is a really good source of calcium and there's lots of calcium in lots of um, things like spirulina, chlorella, all of that stuff. You can find calcium in any, almost every kind of plant-based um, resource. But calcium also helps, I mean, it, it keeps your whole cardiovascular system healthy and helps you to the transfer of oxygen. It's very important, not just for bones. It's very important for you to have calcium in your body and magnesium as well. Um, let's talk about these three that we're, everybody's pretty familiar with. Digitalis, digo, digi, Digoxin, and Digitoxin. Don't you love that? Digitoxin. Tells me right there it's not a good thing to have. Um, they're used to heat, treat heart failure, which is uh, by reducing the pumping efficiency, okay? And arrhythmia. It forces the heart to pump stronger and slows the ventricu ventricular rate and your nerve impulse. So it's making your heart beat stronger, but it's slowing everything else down. And it is highly, highly toxic. As an alternative to that, Hawthorne, Hawthorne Berry, strengthens your heart. It's literally food for your heart. And there is a lot of research behind this, you guys. This is one reason it's one of my favorite herbs for um, people with heart issues. This is what I give my mother. Okay, Hawthorne feeds your heart and your cardiovascular system without any of those negative effects. It will make your heart pump stronger as well, but it is a whole herb and it's feeding all of the system not just one thing cayenne pepper increases your circulation to the heart and enables the nutrients to enter therefore you're getting more oxygen you're dilating your blood vessels and your um, capillaries everything is opening up and motherwort helps nerves regulate rhythm and none of these are toxic so you have motherwort you have cayenne pepper you have hawthorn and you have lemon balm that is right there in that little handful of herbs is the makings of a very strong healthy cardiovascular system and you'll feel so much better and you won't have any side effects because like I've said before if you are using the whole herb you 
won't have any side effects. It's when you start extracting from herbs and you start using concentrated extracts of herbs that you will create side effects, sometimes deadly side effects. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about diuretics because they go hand in hand too. You know, you get, you go to the cardiologist and they're going to put you on these drugs and these drugs and oh yeah, and you're going to need a diuretic. So let's get the Lasix out or let's get this or that or the other. Diuretics reduce the water in your system. Did we not just say, what are the two things we are? We are water and electricity, right? So yeah, you don't want to swell up, but the only reason you'd be swelling up is if you had a blockage, right? And if your lymph system wasn't working right, but if you're working right, you're not going to swell up unless you've got something in there that you're not supposed to. So less water equals less blood production and less blood pressure. So that's their thinking. That's how they're going to bring your blood pressure down by suck, by draining the water out of your body. They might as well just put leeches on you. The side effect of this is a loss of potassium. I already told you what can happen when you lose when you have a loss of potassium. You can have a heart attack. Because potassium is used to regulate your heart rhythm and an imbalance of that can cause heart failure. Too high or too low. Keep track of your potassium. So, herbal diuretics, which are much more fun to do, is dandelion, uh, parsley. Parsley root is one of my favorite diuretics. Parsley tea. And watermelon. And also celery. Celery is also a good diuretic, but, but it also has, it's a natural source of sodium. So you're getting rid of excess water, but you're also keeping your electrolytes from being depleted. Celery juice. It's one of the best things. I tell people a lot of times, people that have gout, I'll say, okay, you need to drink celery juice and get off red meat because your uric acid level is too high and you're, you need to um, have a natural diuretic. So the celery juice will help with that. Easy. Um, blood thinners. Let's compare. They've got, they offer you Coumadin and aspirin. Nature offers you onions, garlic, cayenne, willow bark, fruits, green leafy veggies, and regular veggies. All of those are good blood thinners. If you're on a blood thinner, the first one of the first things they'll tell you is, oh, don't eat any spinach. You don't want to eat anything that has vitamin K in it because it's going to interact with your blood thinner. Why don't you just eat the spinach? Also, willow bark and I've got willow bark tincture that I make myself um, that is on my website, but anybody can get onions and garlic and fruits and vegetables and cayenne pepper. Okay, now here's the kicker. Numerous studies have shown the link between cardiovascular disease and fast food. This, I'm sure, is not news to most of you. McDonald's and et al. have all protested these results, but they can't deny them. The studies include those conducted by the Ryan Mackey Memorial Research, Harvard University, Sydney Center for Cardiovascular Health, and if you're really looking for something interesting to read, I know it sounds controversial right now given everything else, but there's a book called The China Study that's pretty darn interesting. So, fast food is not your friend. It is full of all the wrong things. Not to mention I'm not even sure it's real. But the preservatives that they have to use in order to keep the food alive, if you can call it that long enough for you, will kill you. And they will really jack you up. So if you just stay away from fast food and even restaurant food to a certain degree, you could probably take care of a lot of your cardiovascular issues just with that, especially if it's blood pressure. So here, in my opinion, is the best way to heal your heart. Cleanse and nourish with whole healthy foods, exercise, and use herbs. 
the ones we talked about, dandelion, parsley, watermelon, willow bark. Willow bark is, um, where it's actually the, what they make aspirin from. It's salicylic acid, so it's a blood thinner. It's also a good pain reliever. Um, what else did we talk about? We talked about hawthorn, cayenne pepper, um, motherwort, angelica, garlic. Garlic lowers your blood pressure. I've told you my blood pressure story there. Vitamin C in any form, but especially in natural forms like pine needle tea and you know, fruits, strawberries have good vitamin C in them, bell peppers have good vitamin C in them. So just get it naturally. Okay, then that's so that's your physical healing emotionally because it's tied. I'm telling you, it's tied to your heart problems if you have any. You need to go back and you need to figure out emotionally where you're at. Attitude. Your whole approach to things. Something I find is interesting, it was a statistic that I picked up from somewhere, I don't know where, but people who interrupt, <laughs> I laugh at this, people who interrupt are seven times more at risk for heart disease than people who don't interrupt. Interesting. Uh, resolutions. Focus on listening while others are speaking instead of racing ahead or maybe even not even listening to them but thinking your own thing. Really try to focus on what that person is telling you and listen to them. It's not that easy. Spiritual. Have a strong relationship with your creator and your neighbors and your family and yourself and your friends. You might want to consider using flower essences, which may be something I talk about at some point down the line too, because there, it is a really neat gift from nature. It's a very um, special aspect of our um, emotional and spiritual being that um, nature, nature offers something there as well. Um, I, in fact, I have a whole array of. Um, flower essences that I have in my line that I just from my own property um, I call them life boosters and they're on my website as well my website is www.crookedhouseherbals.com and um, anything that I've talked about here tonight you can you can find there and if you can't please email me and I'll make sure it gets on there sometimes we just got through switching some stuff up on my website and sometimes things don't always end up there but I will definitely make arrangements to get you whatever it is that you're looking for but I hope that this has been encouraging to you I didn't want it to be a downer but I wanted you to know that for everything that's going on anything that's going on in our bodies there is a natural offering and if you're willing to work with your body and go through it with your body you can do things naturally I think what has happened is that in through the course of you know the past few decades we have just gotten to the point where everything has to be fixed like that you know we have to have an instantaneous response and so we're missing out actually on the beauty of actually living with ourselves and being a part of our own existence instead we are just robots and we're moving ahead and we need to be optimal and we need to be functioning on all eight cylinders all the time and and there's no time for that I just need to get something to take care of this pain so I can keep moving when you don't realize that pain is your friend because it's telling you something's not right so you need to slow down you need to address what's wrong and the pain will go away that's how you work with your body and you know if if this quarantine business and all the stuff that's been going on in the past three months has done anything in a positive way it has forced everybody to slow down and this is a good chance and a good opportunity for you to maybe make some changes that could be permanent and that is make yourself the promise that you will spend more time with your own body and with your own self 
and learning how it works and listening to I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Okay, that's it for me tonight. I hope that you guys uh, were able to get something from it. Also, my my illustrious um, artist was unable this week to do a picture for us because she was contracted by a, an educational tutorial um, company to do some illustrations. But she said she'll be back next week with a picture for us. So this week what I did is I did a... Um, word search for you. It's uploaded and um, it's got, I uh, I still have some of my teacher things in me so I created a word search with some of the words and things and the herbs and different things that we talked about tonight. So you and your children or whomever can do that. If you, if you need the um, key I can get that to you if you need it but I don't think you will. Um, yeah and if you ever get a chance to check out Mandy's website, it's Amanda Pascal Illustration. <sighs> she does marvelous stuff, and I guarantee you, she's going to be somebody you're going to want to know. And for those of you that live in the Hot Springs, Arkansas area, she's a local, guys. She's one of ours. So someday you're going to say, I knew her when. And I really enjoy her artwork. She's really, really starting to blossom as an artist. And I, I, I encourage you to check out her site. Okay, I love you guys, and I will see you next week. I hope this was helpful, and if there's anything I can do to help you throughout the week, let me know. Um, you can get a hold of me, www.crookedhouseherbals.com, wendy at crookedhouseherbals.com, or... Facebook, Crooked House Herbals. You can message me and I will be there. Take care. Night. <laughs>